So good morning. Um, I'm Dominic Bergman. I'm Yang Gong. We're from Stanford and HHMI, and we're absolutely delighted to be part of this development presents. We're also very honored to be selected in the special issue of Emini Development. Yan is going to present the work that he did in this paper that was part of the recent uh, special issue, and I'm going to give a little bit more of the background um, that led up to this project. So what we're interested in is asymmetric cell divisions, divisions in which a mother cell divides, it creates two daughters that differ. They differ in size, in their components, um, where they are, and eventually what they do. Now, asymmetric divisions are found throughout the, the kingdom, all the kingdoms of life. We find them in bacteria, plants, and animals. And in all of these cases, they're really important for creating cell type diversity. But in addition, in some of these cases, there's also a stem cell component. And that's exactly what's at play when we look at the epidermis of a plant leaf. So we look at this in Arabidopsis, the plant shown um, on the edge of the screen and in cartoons in the middle. And the asymmetric division that we're talking about is one where a, a young cell divides and creates a larger and a smaller cell. And those cells eventually become the two differentiated cell types that are essential for a, a plant leaf to function. So the on purple are the stomatal guard cells that enable gas exchange from the atmosphere to the plant. And these white jigsaw puzzle cells are uh, required to waterproof the plant. Now, if there was just a single uh, lineage, as I've shown here on this slide, then this would be fairly boring. Um, but in fact, once there's an asymmetric division, that actually enables this whole system to act as, as stem cells. And so there are alternative paths. And um, a, a, a small cell can divide again. The larger cell can actually divide again and create a new small cell. And in doing this, the plant leaf can create a number of different cells and can uh, change the ratio of what kind of cells it makes. And this makes uh, development of plants incredibly adaptable. So at the heart of these asymmetric divisions are polarity proteins. Now in animals, they would be things like the PARs. Plants don't make PARs. Their alternative um, is a set of proteins that are really biochemically have no known functions, um, but they're, they're beautifully cortically localized, um, and then they are asymmetrically distributed. Now, they're analogous to PARs, but they don't behave exactly the same way. And one of the things that we notice in looking at the dy dynamics of these is that they polarize. Um, here's an asymmetric division. You can see the division plane in the center and they stay around for a very long time. The timestamp here is actually hours, not minutes. So these are polarized, they polarize before division where you might expect they might participate in things like orienting where the cell divides and making sure that some things are segregated, but they also stay around for a very long time afterwards. That's intriguing. Now, if you don't have these polarity proteins, lots of things go wrong. So if you look at the terminal phenotype, um, two stomata are formed, but there should only be one. They're small clusters of cells. Um, and overall, this leads to very poor plant leaf performance. So we were intrigued by these polarity proteins. We don't know what they do. We're curious by how long they last. And so in order to make some progress on this, there were really two key innovations that went into this paper. One was from Julian uh, Alassimon, who created the genetic tools to be able to supply polarity proteins at discrete times and places so we could functionally ask when are they needed um, in order to ensure that all of the asymmetries, the size, the shape, the contents, the fate, how those are all coordinated. And then Yan really pioneered the dis different kinds of imaging. And what's important here is that we need to image at two different time scales. So with time-lapse movies, um, Yan was able to capture how, how subcellular dynamics um, occur. And then over a longer time scale, a time course experiment, he took snapshots throughout the whole life of that leaf so that we could follow what happened once and how that led to the fate outcomes in that cell, its daughters and its granddaughters. Thank you, Dominique. With these imaging techniques, we were able to characterize the phenotype of the basal null mutant in greater details. And we can trace the origin of the both the stereotypical small cell cluster phenotype and also the stomata pair phenotype. And we see that the small cell cluster phenotype is largely induced by the overproliferation of the daughter cell of the asymmetric cell division, versus the stomata pair phenotype can be caused by the failure to separate daughter cell fate after the first asymmetric cell division, or the uh, lack of ability to orient uh, stomata forming division to be away from each other, as shown here in the second scenario. 
However, although this time lapse and time course analysis uh, allowed us to identify how the base of Newton phenotype are generated, we still don't know the, how the dynamics of the basal polarity and the long duration of the basal polarity before and after ACDs are affecting the progression of asymmetric cell division and stomata lineage development. To answer this question, in collaborating with the postdoc Julian, we generate a set of basal expression toolbox, which allow us to express basal in different phases of the normal um, windows, uh, expression window of the asymmetric cell division. For example, we can express basal in the full length where they polarize before asymmetric cell division and stay polarized afterwards. Additionally, we can also restrict the basal expression window only before asymmetric cell division. We see the polarized before here in the asymmetric cell division here, where uh, after asymmetric cell division, its proteins degraded. Lastly, we can also just only express space or after asymmetric cell division, and we see them polarize in this grid in this context and stay polarized as long as the basal four. We then using this different basal expression variant uh, to rescue the basal non mutant and assess so what phenotype can be rescued by different variants as a way to try to understand what's the function of basal before and after asymmetric cell division. We first look at the uh, stereotypical stomata pair phenotype, and we see that by supplying basal uh, in the normal expression window in the basal four variant, we see that the stomata pair phenotype is mostly rescued. On the other hand, to our surprise, we find that if we only supply, supply basal before symmetric cell divisions, it's, a, in, it's not sufficient to rescue the phenotype. However, if we express basal after a symmetric cell division, it, come, it mostly prevents the formation of stomata pair. This result suggests that the post-division basal polarity, it is the one that controlling the cell phase separation in ACD daughter cells, uh, which is largely different from the other cell polarity um, models has been established in animals. Similarity, only having basal after asymmetric cell division is also sufficient to suppress over proliferation phenotype observed in the basal mutant, uh, whereas if we're having basal before asymmetric cell division, it's not enough to suppress, suppress these phenotypes. If predivisional basal is not controlling the phase separation of ACD daughter cell fate, then we were very curious what is the function before asymmetric cell division. To answer that, we took the classical cell biology approach and dig deeper with our live imaging techniques. We noticed that with basal pre, we always observe that the uh, basal polarity crescent would form on the opposite side of where the future small cell is going to form. Um, in other words, that we always observe a very strong um, cases of cell size asymmetry, whereas in the basal close plant, the size, uh, cell size asymmetry it was not always so consistent anymore. That we can see that in some cases, the cell inheriting the crescent is actually smaller than the cell not inheriting the crescent. We can further quantify this phenotype. We observe that in white type columbia and the basal pre-plant, we always have a very consistent uh, cell size asymmetry during asymmetric cell division, whereas in the basal post, plants, this cell size asymmetry is largely reduced. In some cases, we even observe that the polarity crescent will be inherited by the smaller cells. The cell size asymmetry a reversal phenotype gave us a very unique opportunity to ask in the stomata lineage, what actually drive the cell fate asymmetry? Is that the difference in inheritance of the polarity crescent, or is that the difference in the cell sizes? By looking at hundreds of cell divisions, we notice that no matter how big the cell is inheriting the crescent, it always acquire the SLGC fate and eventually become a pavement cells. It suggests that it is the uh, cell polarity inheritance that will drive the cell fate asymmetry, not the size the differences in cell size. This result further puzzled us. If cell size asymmetry is not important for the uh, cell fate asymmetry in the stomata lineage, why are these two always coupled together? Because plant cell non mobile, we were actually able to track not only the fate of the cell inheriting the crescent during our time lapse and time course experiment, we were actually also able to track all the surrounding cells. And we discovered that when the cell size reversal happens in the basal post plant, the abnormally large um, asymmetric cell division sister cells, the meristemoid, 
have a much higher chance to undergo additional self-renewal division than normal cases. Suggesting that the cell size symmetry is important for the balance of stem cell renewal compared to its differentiation. We're trying to uh, pin down the connection here um, currently. If you're interested, please stay tuned for update. In summary, our results show that in the Rhabdopsis stomata lineage, cell polarity plays discrete but separate roles in mother and daughter cells of the asymmetric cell division. Specifically, before asymmetric cell division onset, cell polarity controls of a cell size asymmetry of asymmetric cell division, versus after asymmetric cell division, cell polarity is important for the separation of daughter cell fate. In addition, the ability of not only tracking the uh, polarity behavior during a symmetric cell division, but also the ability to track fate of not only the cell inheriting the crescent, but also all the surrounding cell, gave us the opportunity to identify the cell size asymmetry is important for the self renewal capacity of the cell not inheriting the pol polarity crescent during stomata lineage asymmetric cell division. This result suggests that um, in the stem cell population, Cell polarity and asymmetric cell division must be considered in the light of their lineage history and how of this uh, how each of these uh, polarity dynamics can affect the behavior of future stem cells. Lastly, thinking about the long basal polarity after asymmetric cell division and the long cell cycle of the plant cell divisions. Uh, we hypothesize that the basal polarity after asymmetric cell division would allow environmental factor to act on the signaling molecule that are already um, scattered folded on this polarity crescent and to control the stem cell behavior and the lineage progression. Because of time, we don't have enough time to go into the detail of this result. If you're interested in, in this aspect, please check out our paper, it's specifically figure five. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out or ask us in the Q&A session. Thank you very much. Thank you, that was great. I'm waiting for questions in the Q&A tab. But while we wait for questions, let me ask you about this. What's the relationship between sort of molecular identity and the cell size? So can you, decouple the two things. So is it the um, molecular identity of being basal or apical or is it the, the, the cell size which is determining behavior here? Where should I? Um, why don't you take this one? I'm not quite <laughs> sure um, what James is asking. Yeah, so um, I mean, this was our, our kind of big question that there are lots of systems in which cell size is used to indicate something about cell identity. And here we've got actually a very wide range of cell sizes. Um, and but this is also kind of a stem cell population. And so something that it, it's a little bit hard to completely uncouple those. But we do think that Yen's work that's happened after this is, is that there's there is some sort of cell size threshold that triggers a differentiation into one, one decision and the other. And what's interesting is that um, this is a system, it's a little bit different than many of the systems that have been intensively studied where um, there's a very invariant way in which cell polarity and cell size, so like the C. elegans embryo, everything is always the same. This is more flexible. Um, there's growth in this system. So unlike something like a Xenopus, where you go through a number of divisions and then kind of transition, you can grow in between things. And so the cell size thing is, has, has puzzled us, but it does look like there is some sort of threshold, um, and Jan's trying to figure this out, by which when you're beyond a cell size, you will leave a stem cell population. And so what looks like is happening is that there's something about inheriting a crescent and being small uh, or the other cell being small that that makes that go into a differentiation stage. But if those are uncoupled, then um, you don't know what you are and you think, oh, well, I guess I'll just, I'm big enough that I'll be a stem cell again. Mm -hmm. So that Good. seems to be the situation in this, in this system. Thanks. Um, Alex Eve is asking, do you think there is any link between basal polarity and regulating the position of cell division? Right, uh, great question. So uh, 
Uh, not a postdoc in the lab, now a professor at UCSD. We actually just published another paper last year in current biology, uh, illustrating the connection there. So uh, in short, that the basal polarity would control the nuclear position before symmetric cell division. That in turn determine where the division plane is going to be through um, uh, cytoskeletons. Okay. Good, thank you. Uh, Helen uh, Zeno is asking, is it possible to block cortical localization of basal and what impact does that have on asymmetric cell division? Right. So um, basal, if you notice, very interesting localization. It's partially in the nucleus and partially polarized on the membrane. So there are a number of ways we can manipulate the localization. So if we remove the cortical localization completely, force everything to be the nucleus, the cell is completely depolarized. and. Uh, uh, have the basal no phenotype. On the other hand, if we extended the um, cortical localization all around the membrane, it also have the uh, loss of polarity phenotype. So that means um, it ha really has to be uh, differently inherited after the symmetric cell division to controlling the cell phase. Uh, Daisy uh, Vinter is asking, I think, a similar question to Alex. Does basal affect the position of the spindle and the axis of division in mitosis? I don't, is there anything else you want to add? I guess the only thing I'd add is that in, in plants, the spindle is a little bit after the fact, so that the actual determination of the division plane is set up um, uh, by a pre-prophase band, so before mitosis, and the position of the, the uh, nucleus, although it's actually hotly contested as to whether this band or the nucleus is the actual determinant. So it's kind of fun to have a different system than the spindle. Um, and I think what's maybe the most interesting thing to me about that is when you think about the polarity that is, again, I'll just use CL again as an example. There's a polarity crescent and there, it's kind of pulling on the astral microtubules of, of the spindle. So that all orients. But the geometry would be different in a plant where we've got a crescent on one side, but the band can't touch it at all. And so physically how that works has got to be different. We're trying to figure that out. Okay. Uh, Gaurav Bhavwe is asking, what mechanisms ensure basal localization at particular region of the cell membrane? <laughs> yeah, it's that's the... Yeah, million dollar yeah question. that's the million quest dollar question that we really want to answer. Um, so basal co-localized with the other polarity protein, breaks family proteins to wherever it polarizes. Right? Uh, but we really don't know what are the um, external, internal cue that would trigger or determine the location pattern. I think we're trying, still trying to figure it out. Yeah, we know uh, it, it probably responds to some sort of signaling so that you can, uh, there are there are external factors and there are signaling molecules that in their absence, it becomes um, localized to a different part, but it's still polarized. So we don't know what controls that part. And I'll take Alex's question as a final question. Are all cells in the tissue dividing at the same rate or do differentiated or stroke daughter cells have different cell cycle lengths? <laughs> yeah, great question. Yeah, so uh, we actually added this figure to the uh, during revision. So, um, uh, interestingly, the small daughter cell and the large daughter cell dif uh, divide at a very different rate. Small cell actually divide faster than the large cell, which is uh, very different compared to the shoot apicomary stem of uh, Arabidopsis. Even um, and after losing basal, however, this difference is largely hom homogenized. So we don't see a clear difference at all. Um, yeah, and then um, also interestingly, the self-renewing division divide seems to be much faster than the differentiation, the last division of the symmetric division where the stomata actually form. So also indicating different cell cycle controllers are mediating those processes. Great, thank you very much. Thank you to both of you.